we're back on the Cummings 12 valve. It's over there, as you can see in its favorite position here, getting ready for some more upgrades. In the last video, we upgraded the pump governor springs. We put the 3,000 RPM springs in. They did great. We're pulling straight to 3,000 now. Cuts off at right around 3,100, 3,200. So that's safe for the stock valve springs, which we're leaving in there for now. Uh, but we are going to do something different. And that is we're going to change these delivery valves, which are not much bigger than the stock ones. This one already has decent sized delivery valves because it's a 215 pump and it has a 181 delivery valve. And we're going to switch to the 191s, a little bit bigger. This will just get us a tiny bit more fuel, uh, hopefully in the mid range, just to help spool us up a little bit quicker. It spools decently, as you've seen in the other videos, but what the hell? Let's try get a little bit more out of it so you can see right on the package there or right on the side of the delivery valve says 191 this should be a pretty straightforward process you just need the the appropriate socket for it it's a 32 tooth i think anyway you'll find it as soon as you search for it and some o-rings just to replace just in case so let's go ahead and get to it it's a pretty simple process you just have to crack your uh fuel lines off right here and take your valve cover off and get them off the injectors on the other side pull this off and then your delivery valves will be right inside here so let's get started on that shouldn't take too long as long as everything goes smoothly we'll be done in a jiffy let's get it going all right we got them all out except this last one we're going to drop the last one in now see right there like that we'll put the holders back on, torque them all down, put the lines back on, and let's start her up. And she's all back together. Not a bad job. It's about a 45 minute to an hour. But now we've cracked these lines loose, we've got air in there. So it might take a little while to crank off. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. There she goes. Like nothing ever happened. All right. Cool time. We'll go ahead and take it for a drive here now. Let it warm up and see. Uh, all right, so we're out here now with the uh, with the delivery valves. Do another little test drive here. Hopefully, I can capture the boost on it, so you can see just how how she gets. I'm gonna start in third gear, so we have a nice load on it. 1500 RPM. Here we go. sound came through on the camera too because it sounds awesome so big difference as you can see uh, 42 pounds of boost from 32 33 pounds of boost before so we picked up quite a bit of boost and that's all from fuel so we know that extra fuel is definitely being delivered to those injectors so I'm super super pumped on that this thing feels amazing uh, this is how it should be as far as I'm concerned now this is an old turbo so life expectancy is not the greatest but we'll see if we can get something new and stick it in there for longevity purposes but for now I'm just gonna enjoy what this little HX 35 has to offer It actually feels really good. All right, we're 
back. No leaks. Everything looks good. And uh, I did a couple of a couple more pulls, and in third gear lugging or even fourth gear, we're hitting 40 psi now. Uh, so I didn't change the boost level myself. That's all fuel that did that. So it is getting a lot of extra fuel, or enough extra fuel, I should say, to spin that turbo into the 40s. So the scary zone for a stock HX35. I know some people run these really high in the 50s, but this is an old, old turbo. So I'm going to be hunting for a turbo, I think. If uh, if you know anybody, or if you've got any connections that want to help me out, please consider it. Because I definitely would like to put a nice spinny boy in here. Anyway, that's going to do it for this uh, this modification. Delivery valves are in. This whole girl is really pumping now. Um, power level, I've been reading it's probably close or getting close to that 375, maybe 400 range. So uh, uh, realistically, probably not going to want to push it too much harder without maybe doing head studs and things like that. And especially that turbo because the turbocharger is creating a lot of back pressure, which is raising, raising our EGTs. And that, that drive pressure is harmful to this this motor so if we get a nice big turbo that's able to flow a little more air maybe it'll spool a tiny bit slower but the drive pressure will be a lot closer and it will be much healthier for this that's going to be the best bet then we can push 45 uh, psi 50 psi and eat up that extra fuel that we just threw at it which means more power either way let's see loving this thing and you know I had to test this out now that we've got the truck pretty much where we want to be I decided to pull the boat out and just hook it up and see how it works everything seems to be perfect barely any setup needed at all and we got war pony out running on the hose taking her to the water soon but tomorrow we're gonna take this thing to a car show the whole rig why not let's do it love it that's Florida style right there so one last thing I want to talk about real quick is transmission this is a, an interesting transmission a very unique one this is the new venture 4500 a pretty strong five-speed manual transmission that's in these trucks and a couple of other trucks some gm stuff um and it takes a very specific transmission fluid because it uses a carbon synchro it's really really i mean i want to call it exotic it's exotic so um the transmission fluid that you use for these is no longer available so Luckily, Redline has their MT85, which is uh, compatible. You can see everything on here. It's a GL4, and it replaces the, the I know the GM part number is 12346190. So it shows that listed here, which means it's specifically for these transmissions and these synchros. Do not use anything else. The fluid I took out was not that. So clearly, I mean, not everyone knows this stuff, but now you do. Make sure you use the right fluid. This stuff doesn't even smell like gear oil. When you smell this compared to gear oil, like gear oil smells terrible, in my opinion. This stuff smells sweet. It's really nice. So if you're going to do a tranny uh, flush or change on one of these manual transmissions, NV4500, make sure you get some MT85. And they say four quarts, but everybody I've talked to says dump five through the shifter hole. So that's what I did. And... Uh, job done and if you're like me and you're out in the sun all the time getting stuff done if it's on a farm if it's on the water if it's whatever you're doing working on cars trucks these shirts i want to talk about it for a second these shirts are insane they're so good c-tech check them out really awesome stretchy breathable it's 90 plus degrees out here 
I wear these long sleeve shirts in the sun and I do just fine. They soak up sweat, they keep you cool, they keep you uh, safe from the UV rays. The best shirts you can buy, it's all I wear anymore. Get yourself one or two or three or four or five or as many as you can from SeaTech while you can. They're the best shirts, trust me.